Greetings. I've been using raw therapy for the past few years and available in raw therapy 5.9, we have vector scopes. I know others have done videos on vector scopes, but for myself, I used a color checker, making a custom profile and bringing this in. Also, I'm going to show what was throwing me off using the vector scope, one of the problems that I'd come across. So we can see here on the left on the vector scope, so if I bring up the histogram here that I normally use, so I'm relatively new to using vector scopes, but as we see here on the vector scope, we have a, a line here representing the skin tones. If we hover over the skin tones there, it's not lined up. Now, I've done nothing to this image yet. I created my own custom preset when I bring the images in and I've been working with a new camera for the past few months, working out what settings I want for the custom profile. So to start with, I will come to the processing profiles and select the profile that I created. Now, you can bring it in as neutral, but that's not what I do. I created my profile here. You can see the, the, how it's been applied and how the vector scope changed. So if I just go back, we can see here where the color range is. And then if I, there's my preset. So when I click there, you can see the adjustments being made. And I'll just show you what's going on. So if I come over to the transform, come down to profiled lens correction. Now it's selected the camera and the lens combination correctly, but by default it has vignetting on and geometric distortion. So I've turned those off and I have another video talking about that. And also made a small correction for the distortion. Also in the raw tab, I leave the demosaicing a maze and also in the processing I have these two checked off as I had in one or two photos red pixels on, on the images. So I leave this turned on, also the noise reduction and defringe by default. The rest is left alone. So now that I've applied my profile, I'm going to come over to the color tab and come down to color management, apply my custom ICC profile that I created. Yeah, and I'll color profiles, ICC plus DNG, and I'll open that. And you can see the custom profile has been applied to the image. Now if we hover over the skin tones, you can see we're right on the dotted line there. If I just go back to the previous step, you can see that we're still on that line, but if you keep an eye on the colors on the color chart, see the saturation goes up. Also, if you have a look at the vector scope, it stretches the vector scope when I apply that. You can see the color change there. So from this point, I'm just going to do a white balance. Now I did a custom white balance in the camera. But I'll just come down to the patch here and I'll click on that to white balance and you can see very minimal shift there. So if I just go back one step again, it's hard to see on the vector scope, but if we have a look at the temperature, it's 5836 there, 5841. So very close when it comes to the custom white balance in the camera. So if I come back here to the original, you can see a very different looking vector scope. If I come up to the histogram, we can see here, just pulling the image without doing any corrections. And then we can see a histogram there. Get back to the vector scope. Now, now that I have that, what I'll do first is uh, come over to the transform. I know others have done this. It's a good way to check the skin tone according to this reference point. So if I unlock the ratio and turn on the crop and select, and I'll just mark that out and we can see there the skin tone is right on that dotted line. 
I'm fairly happy with the skin tones on that line. But for this purpose, I'll just go down to the RGB curves and I'll turn that on and I'm just going to adjust the blue and I'll just open that up a bit wider. So it's off just slightly so I can pull it down. That should lift it onto that line just a little bit. Just a small adjustment there. So I'll just turn that on and off. You can see that we're a bit more centered on there. I'll just reset that and do that again. Just a slight adjustment there. So if I turn it off and off again, there we go. But for now, I'm just going to leave that off. So if I go back to the crop and take that off, back to the color and then turn off that RGB, you can see there. But for this, I'm just going to turn that off for now and I'm going to pull down our images here and right click and I'm going to copy the profile operations. Come to the image that I'm going to use. Open that and apply that processing operation to this photo. So we can see here the adjustments being made. I'll just click that back again. So we can see here on the vector scopes and the skin tones not on that line and the adjustments that I'd made with the custom profile that I'd made, also the custom color checker profile. And there's the change and if we look at the skin tones there, it's right on that dotted line. It's looking good there. Now one of the problems that I'd found that I was having when I was using the vector scopes as I was getting thrown off. Now if we look here we come down when I just brought the photo in without before creating this and not knowing why I was getting thrown off the working profile was Profoto but the output profile was RTSOGB and I was trying to work out why the vector scope was getting thrown off according to the reference line so I thought of the working profile and the output and I'd come in here and adjusted it to Profoto and we can see here the skin tones are on that line. Now if I change the working profile, because I do use sRGB as well, so if I come down here, you can see the working profile has been applied and you can see the change in the image and the, the colours in the image. And if I do this again, if we watch the vector scope, as we know, the Profoto color gamut is broader than the sRGB. So if I apply that, you can see it gets a little smaller. So I'll go back again. That's the uh, Profoto and then the sRGB. And you can see a, a change in the photo as well. So the range of colors is different. Also, if I use the sRGB and I change it from the output profile, from Profoto to the sRGB output, we can see again that it throws this vector scope off. And if we scroll over the skin tones there, we're off our reference line. So I'll just turn that back to Profoto. So what I'm doing is I'll use the sRGB or Profoto and leave it here as Profoto output profile so I can use the vector scope, use it for the skin tones. It seems to be a very good tool because if you don't have a color checker, you can still use this reference line to dial in the skin tones. And now that I have this done, I can go and start to change the temperature to what I want. So I have a, a good starting point and if I just want to cool the image off just a little bit, I can just slide it back. And we can see there we're still on that line, just dialing the temperatures back just slightly. You can see there it's a little warmer just to cool that image off. And then applying 
things like vignette and continuing on from there. So using the vector scope in uh, raw therapy, I'm reasonably new to using vector scopes, but it seems to be a good tool available for photographers within the program. Peace be unto you.